Hi everybody, welcome to the next updated for 2024 Daisy Editor tutorial. Um, where in this one we're going to do a more complicated build than we did in the other one. So I'm going to go through some of the basics to start off with, make sure we've got all the files ready to go, all the settings ready to go. Then we're going to go into Daisy Editor and we're going to place a, I think we'll probably place a house and maybe a tent and maybe some furniture around it. Um, and then we're going to export the object spawner file, we're going to export the map group pos snippet, we're going to bring it all together, I'm going to show you how to um, upload it to a server, and then uh, you're going to have a really good basic foundation on using the DAISY editor. But before we start, just need to remind everybody that in the description below this video, you'll see a link to this playlist. So this playlist has all of the updated for 2024 beginner's guide to the daisy editor mod really starting with some basic foundational understanding of how the editor works and the fact that how loot is spawned in on your daisy community server for pc and uh, console also you'll see a next video which there i'm not sure whether there will be one but, <laughs> but there'll definitely be a previous video so you can work through them in the order that you want to you can pick and choose or you could work through them sort of sequentially now here we go so first things first let's go and have a look at a server so here we go so on a console server let's jump into a console server so i can show you here we go let's go into this one we need to make sure a certain setting is live first so on nitrado just go to general settings and you'll want to scroll down and i'm sure you've done it already but if you haven't already you need to make sure that enable CFG gameplay.json is ticked and save that file. CFG gameplay.json is a file that does many things, but the most important thing for us is that it's where we put the name and the uh, place of the object spawner file that we're going to create in the Daisy editor. So there's there. Now, when you're on a PC server, it's somewhere slightly different. On a PC server, it's in the um, server dz.config file okay but if you're on nitrado you don't have direct access to server dz.config you get, you get it by clicking on the expert settings and you have to add a line of code in that says enable enable cfg gameplay space equals one semicolon so if you just sort of make that maximum size on your screen you can basically copy that you need to stop your server to make that work and then you hit save and that will mean the cfg gameplay.json file will be active so what we're going to do next is we're going to download a couple of files because we're going to be editing them so um on either your pc server or on your console server um you want to go into it'll be the daisy part of it so it'll probably say uh, Xbox Daisy or PS Daisy or something like that and then you want to go to the MP missions so on Xbox it'll say XP missions on PlayStation it says PS missions on PC it just says MP missions and we click on here and then we're interested in Chernerus if it was Livonia it would be Enoch if you're working on a custom map on PC it could be Anastara or something or something else so we're going to click on that and we're going to download a couple of files. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom and we're going to download map group pos to our local PC. And we're going to download CFG gameplay as well. Where's CFG gameplay? There it is. Let's download CFG gameplay.json. They'll be in our downloads folder. So let's go over there. And what we do, let's open up map group pos. Edit with Notepad. Plus plus. Ooh, where are we? Wrong window. Let's open up CFG gameplay.json. I think it's always good to edit these on the local PC because especially in something like Notepad Plus Plus, you can see the mistakes. So if we scroll down, your file will have an object spawner array line. And yours, if it's got nothing on it at the moment, it'll have left square bracket, quotation mark, and then another quotation mark, right square bracket, comma. As you can see, this server's already got a custom place, custom location on it. So we've got custom forward slash and then that. Now, map group pause, this is very important because this is the, fi the file that tells the server in these particular locations, at these coordinates, at this altitude and at this pitch angle and yaw, there is a shed or a house or a police station or a fire station. So please spawn in the correct loot at this this location 
some people when they first see this file think that these entries actually spawn that house in there but they don't they're spawned in differently actually within the daisy server.exe file that sorts all that out this is just telling the game look that building that's on that map in that place that's one of these things so it's a land house w106 for example which is the custom one so we're going to get rid of that actually um let's get rid of that this one i did before uh i think it is anyway um so for example the feed check it says there's a feed check here Ooh, let's do that so the feed check at this location at that rotation um please spawn in the relevant random loot with it or well it's not always so random is it so for example a, a greenhouse it would be things like uh, maybe a can of drink or some seeds or you know a um an apple or something like that would be there for do apple spawning greenhouses no i don't think they do do they but that that sort of thing would be some food, wouldn't it? So it says it's there. Just because cause this an entry is here, just because you put one in, that doesn't spawn that structure in. It just tells the game that's where it should spawn the loot for that particular structure. So they're the two particular files we're going to be looking at. So we've got them all on our local server. So the next thing we want to do is fire up Daisy. We want to go to the mods. And then we just want to make sure that we fire up the other stuff. So I'm just going to do a search for editor. And we're going to... Daisy editor from Steam Workshop, and it says it needs these two items. So we're gonna we're gonna load them all together like that. Um, now we don't need zombie admin tools. I always recommend whenever you're going into the Daisy editor, don't load any mods that you, you don't need. Um, and really, you don't need many when you're using the Daisy editor because remember, it's a local mod. It's just playing on your local PC. It doesn't work off a remote piece, remote um, server, or anything like that. Also remember, although though we do load the Builder Items mod, on console we can't use any of the stuff that starts Builder. And on PC, if you do use the Builder Items, you need to make sure the Builder Items mod is installed on your server, otherwise those things won't spawn in. So let's hit play. Also bear in mind that the Daisy Editor mod can be a little bit buggy, and a little bit crashy, so we've got to make sure that we um, save everything as we're going along and, and be prepared for that. It's always best to have lots of files with with um, different structures in than having one file with everything. So let's say you had um, you you were putting tents in different parts of the map, you know, with with loot in or something like that. Sometimes it's best not to have one file with ten tents in that are spread out all over the map. Just have ten separate files. That way you can find errors much easier. So now we click on Open Editor, Turnerus Plus. Um, so let's select that one. At that point, if we'd lo loaded in um, the something like the Namalsk mod, Namalsk Island, that would have been a selection there. Okay, so we're in the we're in the editor now, so we can look around with our mouse. So you scroll your mouse around, you can look around. If you hit spacebar, that brings up your cursor, so you can select things, and then we can WASD it around. If we hold down on our right mouse button, we can look around as well, and we can use Q to go up, we can use Z to go down. If as we're moving forward, we press the shift button at the same time, we go faster. And if we press the alt button, we go much slower as well. So we can zoom around and we can find stuff. If we press M, we can bring up the map and then we can scroll out using our mouse wheel. And let's say, we're, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Let's go up to my favorite. I like I liked doing things up at the Northeast Airfield because it's nice and flat. Now, once we get here, if we just click in our mouse button, we get the little target, so we can just press M, and we come out, and that's where we are. We're at the Northeast Airfield. So let's come down, and let's go. Let's go over here to this like parking area here. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do something here. Let's have a thing. I think we're gonna do like a a crash site with some military tents around it. Now. I've already said we can't use builder stuff, but you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. What are the names of the things that I want to use? You know, how do I know what they're called? Because they've all got weird names. And you could search for things. You could search for, like, house and things would come up. However, a little trick you can do is if you go over to Eyes of Ive, I'll put links in the description below the video, what you can do is if you see something that you like, for example, this, if you click on it, we can see that we know that there's a cargo plane there. So that's the name of the cargo plane, Landrec C-130J Cargo. So we go, ah, 
So if I want to put a cargo plane down, I, that's what I look for. Or let's have a look what else we've got. So we also have things like, um, let's make sure we've got all of the, all of the loot. That's all there. There we go. Ooh, we didn't want that, did we? Say we liked, what have we got? We knew, say this type of building that was here. That's a land water station. You go, oh, right, okay, fair enough. Um, you might say, what about the air traffic ta control tower? That's somewhere over here, isn't it? It's spawned, it's going closer. And we go, oh, what about that? Oh, so that one there at the Northwest Airfield is land underscore mill underscore ATC big. Oh, right, I guess I know what to look for there. Well, how about tents? So we know there's tents up here, don't we? So what about if we click on one of these and we go, okay, well, that sort of tent is a land mill tent big one underscore two. Now, it's important to know these because you only really want to use the names of the things off that will spawn in on the map that you're working on. So the two main maps we have at the moment are Chernerus and Livonia, aren't they? There are the occasional thing that will of structure that will be on Livonia that isn't on Chernerus and vice versa. And where that matters is that, say that uh, we chose a tent, for example, that was only on Livonia. If we try and spawn that on our Chernerus um, map, it will spawn in because the game, the server has access to that file. But it won't have the en entry in the map group Proto to spawn the loot in, or it might not have. So this is the situation where you'll have uh, a tent or something you'll spawn in, and it will be a Livonia thing that is on Chernerus, and you'll be like, well, why is there no, no loot spawning in? Probably because there is no map group Proto entry. The other way that you can check that is you could copy that, for example, and then if we go to our map group pos and we click at the top and we do a control f to find do a control v and we find all in the current document we can see in our map group pos there's lots of land mill tent big ones or one underscore two so we know that there's lots of these on churner so if we add another one in that what that's going to do is that's going to have loot in it we know it's going to work okay so that's one way of of doing it what will happen is as you use um, the editor mod and you uh, experiment and you uh, try lots of different things you'll find that you'll get to a situation where you'll um, you'll kind of know what you're looking for and um, you'll you'll have played around so you'll do things like you know you'll do a search for like fence and you go oh okay look at all these different fences oh oh that looks uh, interesting that's a but that's um sandbag oh okay oh how could i use that um, and do all that sort of stuff. So it's nice and easy. So let's go back to our thing that we were going to do. So let's just go back. So we were going to say we're going to spawn in the C130, weren't we? So let's do a C1, search for C130. Now let's make sure. So we know that the one at the northeast airfield spawns in loot, don't we? So let's just remind ourselves what that is. It was that one, wasn't it? So it's Landrec uh, C-130J Cargo. Okay, in fact, we could copy that there. And we could go back to uh, our map group pause, do a control F, do a control V, find all in current document, and there is one, so that's good. So what we can now do now is go back to the editor. If you ever get this situation where your kind of cursor disappears, press Y to get rid of the uh, interface bring it back press spacebar and generally you'll you'll get the stuff back so let's do a search for c130 there we go so it's that one so we left click on that and let's put it I don't know, let's put it there let's zoom in a little bit get a little bit closer so it doesn't look very good at the moment does it? it's sort of sunk into the tarmac so we're gonna left click on that press alt and then we're just gonna kind of lift it up we're gonna drop it just so it kind of sinks into the ground like so and then we're going to have a look around. We're going to see what it looks like. Now, here's a really clever thing. So if you click somewhere, left click somewhere, and then press T, okay, and then press home, that will then spawn you in. Press enter to go to third person as like a little worker. So you can have a look around and see it as a player would. So you say, okay, so this is still off the ground here. That's still off of the ground there. So we can press home again to come out of it. 
and then we can click on here and then we can press alt and we can just bring it down a little bit further press home again and we're back in as our little fella okay so it's a little bit too low at the moment let's click home again let's go around here spacebar click this press alt take it up really nice and slow just by moving the mouse so I don't know something something like that so that wheel, wheels are still off the ground aren't they so let's bring it down slightly further press alt bring it down nice and slow so the wheels are on the ground oh that's actually that that's pretty good isn't it we could do that press home to go back as the fella okay let's walk in have a look round get a third person that all looks very nice doesn't it very good very good press home to come out of third person now what we could also do now press spacebar and we click that now we can use our arrow keys to slowly move it round. if we press the alt key alt, bu alt button while we're using our arrow keys we can move it even slower if we click somewhere else if we double click on the little square let me scroll this out the way we can actually change the percentages the uh, sorry the coordinates a tiny little bit at a time so we could go we can do like this and just change things very very slowly there also we could change the orientation as well so we could change uh, the rotation that way and then we've got I, th I always get a mix up but there's there's roll pitch in your isn't there so we could change that or we could change that <coughs> um, say put a 15 degree sort of tip on it so then we could say okay so let's come out of here Let's go up and have a look around. So it's kind of leaning over a little bit now, isn't it, on its side? Which looks would look all right if that wheel was on the ground. Let's come down, click that, press Alt, bring it down a little bit. So we've just got a little bit of an angle there. Now, when you're happy with where something is, if you just double click on it and then click on lock there what you'll see is the everything will disappear and that is now locked so we can't accidentally move it um, which is really important because um, when you've got lots of things you're trying to edit it's super easy to accidentally touch something now if we want to unlock it I think you just click that actually yeah there we go we click that and we can lock and unlock it at will which is uh, really easy to do and so there we go so there's the first thing that we've put down in place so let's go back to one of my favorite things let's put a military tent in now let's go back to the northwest airfield and let's just go okay so we know what's that sort of that's a right that's all oh, that's a nice big so we know land mill tent underscore big three will work so we can go back to daisy editor press spacebar click up here click um so if i just look for tent ignore all the builder stuff land mill tent big three is that one so let's left click on that and here is a little tent so let's imagine this airplane kind of is left there and we're going to put put a tent over here so we can click with it left click somewhere and we can click left click and hold Press shift and we can kind of spin it around. Left click somewhere else, let's zoom in a little bit. And then we can make sure. And then if we just press Alt, we can take it. Sometimes I like to take them down, then take them up, and then you look at the duck boards, the wooden boards, just as they break through the tarmac. There we go, something like that. Left click somewhere, press T to transport our guy here, press home to play as him. Go to first person if we like. And we can just have a look around. Because what you'll find is things like grass or rocks and stuff may well be pushing through the thing that you're spawning in. Um, and that could kind of spoil the immersion, can spoil the look of it. I think one of the biggest compliments you can get as a person who builds stuff for um, Daisy think you know things like these uh, structures is that people think that it's part of the game you know it's always been a new player wouldn't think that this has been added by you or anything like that so we're happy with that so we can press home now it's really important now that we actually say save it so we press spacebar file save as and we're gonna 
scroll down here and we're gonna scroll down there there we go now it's actually here that it is you can't see it sometimes it disappears we're gonna call this then waf uh, plane we can call it that I'm just gonna save that okay so that that's saved now so so we know that's cool now what else so the tell you what the military are pretty good at being organized so we're gonna put in a toilet so what we're we gonna do land mesh toilet mobile yep so we're gonna go around here and they would have them at the back wouldn't they you'd have them away maybe they have put them put one sort of oh they'll put it on the concrete maybe there And then let us press left click and shift to spin it around. Where's the door? That's the door. Which way would we have the door facing? Maybe they'll have the door facing that way. And then left click, press Alt. Bring it up. Bring it down. And let's have another one. So let's left click that. Control C to copy it. Left click somewhere else. Control V. And we've pasted it there. So we left click, press Shift. Let's turn it around. So it's kind of facing that one. Let's left click there, press T to transport our guy, press home to look around as the chap. Yeah, that looks alright. Looks alright. You'd, you'd be looking things some like if these guide ropes were, were going through the side of the toilet or something. So there we've got a little toilet area. So let's press home to come out of it. And what else could we put down? Okay, press space bar. One of my favourite things is the, if you type road, land roadblock table. I like these tables. <laughs> They're really good. But let's have, let's put some down here. So let's put that table there. Let's put another table there. Land roadblock. These wooden crates are cool as well. So let's have a, some crates. i tell you what, I think... Uh, y to bring the thing back up. Uh, is it? Let's have a look. Here we are. Static object, rubble, concrete, metal, rocks, boom, damaged rubble, dirt pile. Oh, we don't want builder, sorry. What should we have? Let's say they've made a bit of a mess. Dirt pile medium. Here we go. So let's, there's a bit of rubbish down there. Okay, so now let's get in closer. Let's sort out these tables. So let's do them so they're roughly straight. So I'm left clicking and shift at the same time, just to turn it round. And then we're going to press Alt and left click and just move my mouse up and down. So that one's there like that. Oh, we've managed to move... Ah, see, now that's a classic situation where I've accidentally moved the other stuff as well. So let's just undo that. There we go. So they're all back in the original place. So let's click somewhere else. Okay, so make sure we're not selecting them all this time. Let's just turn that like that. Press Alt to bring it up. Click somewhere else. Shift to turn it round. Alt and left click to go up and down. Let's bring this crate there press shift to turn it around is it quite on the ground not sure let's drop it into the ground first and bring it up take it down let's take this one and let's press alt and let's put it on top of it like so click somewhere press t press home to bring our little fella up does that look like it really is resting on it or is it floating not too bad is it I think we got that right first time okay so that's coming together so as you see we're, we're creating this like little scene nice and simple we don't want to add too much because it will start to put a strain on the server so let's now do what else could we have here um, I do like tents because tents could be seen you know tents would pop up anywhere couldn't they and they do have lead loot on them so we're back up at the northwest airfield so let's see Oh, a container. Containers are good, aren't they? We like containers. So land container. There we go. We want the military one, the 1MO one. So let's go back here. And uh, let's press Y. Bring it back up. Press space bar. Right. Um, con 
container. That's not right, is it? What was it called again? Land. Co land and container. Container. Contain. Here we go. Land container. Oh, I've lost my mouse, haven't I? So, why to get rid of it? Why to bring it back? Spacebar to bring the mouse back. Contain. Land container ammo. There we go. So, let's left click that. Let's put a couple of them. Yeah, because the military would have some containers delivered, wouldn't they, with their heavy lifting gear in? Okay, so if we click somewhere else, we can move one round by itself. And then we click the other one. We can create a box and we can move them both at the same time. So we could press Alt and drop them both in like that. Or if we press Shift, we can kind of move move them around like that. Right, let's just get down a little bit further. Right, so these are clearly off the ground. So let's select them both, press Alt, left click. Take them both down. Just look for that shadow to come into the thing. We've added those. Right, let's. We're happy where all of this is, so let's lock it all into position. Okay. So it's starting to come together, what we're trying to do now. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do something that I don't recommend you do when it comes to loop. I just want to show you just, uh, just as an example. So. If you've watched all the videos, you'll know. Well, let's just press Alt so we can move this slowly. You'll know the difference between uh, CLE spawned loot, so central loot economy spawned loot, which is the way you want loot to spawn. So that's how loot spawns within the game, as apart from loot that is spawned as part of an object spawner. So this file that we're going to create that's going to put this tent in the place with the C130 and the um, and the tables is an object spawn array. However, we can, if we look in here, we can add something like the M14 DMR. The catch is that when you when you add one of these, every time the, the server starts, this M14 DMR um, will always be there. So it's if people want to always come back to a particular place and get something, there will always be something there for them to get, which can be bad in terms of the loot economy because it means people can, can find stuff. Um, so I don't recommend you do that. However, what we will do here, we're going to spawn in some. Here we go. Uh, let's find it. There we go. The metal plate. So the metal plate normally spawns in, doesn't it, um, randomly, just like loot. But we're going to spawn in a metal plate here. And we're going to drop it into the ground. And we're going to copy that. And we're going to control V. We're just going to post it, paste a bit in. So this is an example of something I don't particularly <laughs> recommend you do. So on every ser server restart, if someone comes to this particular place, what they're going to find is there's going to be the usual random loot in the tent and in the containers and in the C-130. But on every server restart, there will be four pieces of metal here that people can then pick up and uh, take away and use on their builders. Now, there was a problem <laughs> not that long ago where you had a problem with duplication of loot. So what would happen is, on a server, every restart, you would get another four pieces of metal, another four pieces of metal, another four pieces of metal. So that's another reason not to do it and rely on the central loot economy. Also, if you ever have a situation where you put a building down or a structure, even like these toilets here, and you open a door to the toilet or the building, and there's another door, and there's another door, and there's another door. That's that's duplication. That means there's lots of toilets inside each other, like this crazy, crazy Russian doll. Okay, so that's our little scene that we've created. So what we need to now do is we need to ob uh, export the relevant bits. Okay, so we're just going to go File. Let's just save it first. So the first thing we're going to export is the... Um, object spawner array file, the JSON. So we're going to file, export, export to object spawner. And then we're going to scroll down. We're going to scroll down. And we're just going to left click here at the bottom by this line to us. Then we're going to call this Northwest Airfield uh, Plane. That's what we're going to Northwest Airfield Plane. So we're just going to export that. Now, 
if we just exported that and used that on our server, what would happen is, yeah, sure, we would get the plane and we would get the tent and we would get the toilets and we get the metal plates and the tables, but we wouldn't get any random loot spawning in. So it's a it's a nice thing to look at, but in Daisy, the reason why you go looking around is often because you're looking for loot, isn't it? So it's very important we go File, Export, and we export the Map Group POS. So we go down here, and in File we'll put Northwest Airfield MP Map Group POS file. And we're just going to export that. Okay, so we've done that. So our little, our little exercise is now done. Remember, if we were to come back and change the locations of any of this stuff and edit it, we must change the map group pods. But we're going to go into that now, and I'm going to show you kind of how it works. So we could exit the editor now. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it open. So let's come out. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the file explorer. And we're going to, I'm going to show you where it puts those files. So the files will be in... Um, your documents folder so if you go into this pc or your pc click on your main drive click on users click on your name and then click on um uh where is it documents and then you'll see daisy so click on daisy and then click on editor okay if i left click up here you can see it's there it's c users scale documents daisy editor and if we sort by date modified we can see the latest ones are up the top so northwest airfield map group pos and northwest airfield dot dze that's because it keeps saving it and northwest airplane dot json so let's open these up with notepad plus plus just so that you can see what they involve there we go there we go so let's just close down the search box so this is the northwest Air, northwest airfield plane.json. This is the object spawner array. As we look down, we can see, well, there's the cargo plane. Nice, easy. There's those coordinates, that roll pitch in yours. There's the tent. There's the toilet. There's the other toilet. There's one of the tables, another table, another wooden crate, dirt pile, land container. This is a good thing to look for and just make sure you haven't accidentally used the builder object. Very, very common mistake to make where you accidentally choose builder um, on a uh, console server or even on a PC server that doesn't have the builder mod loaded up. So so that's cool. And let's have a look at the little snippet. Now, the, the map group pause entry is a snippet of code. It's nothing else. It's not the whole file. So we've got to add this. So you remember early on, when we first started off, we downloaded our CFG gameplay file, didn't we? And we downloaded our map group pause. What we can we, we can do now is if we just copy the bit between map and map, so this bit, we can just copy that, go to our map group pause that we downloaded earlier. Now, I recommend you leave some space like that. And in fact, what you could do is if you do left arrow bracket exclamation mark dash dash um, custom n w a f build and then put uh, dash dash right arrow bracket uh, in fact what we could probably do is put start of that there we go start of custom northwest airfield build and we copy that so what these are if you put any text inside a left arrow bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash, your text, then dash, dash, right arrow bracket, that, that, that's just a remark. So the server doesn't try and read that. But what it allows us to do is when we come back to this file, we can go, all right, I understand what this code is. So if you imagine we, um, we wanted to move some of the objects in this particular build, we would know this is, this is the bit we would delete and we would use a fresh file. So you could do that that way. So our map group pos is now ready to be uploaded again to our server to replay, replace the existing one. But we also need to upload our Northwest Airfield JSON um, and this snippet, and we need to edit our CFG gameplay .json as well. So here we go. So what we're going to do now is let's go to our server. There we go. Now, in the root directory of your mission, so if we, in case you forget, let's just go back to MP missions. So when you're at your missions folder, you'll see Chernerus and Enoch. So we're going to go into Chernerus. What I highly recommend is, 
if you're on PC, create a custom folder like this. Because on console, we have to have a custom folder. And all our custom files must go in a custom folder. If they're not inside a custom, custom folder on our server, the, the servers simply won't read them, so they won't work. Now, on a, on a PC server, you can put files wherever you like, but if, at least if they're all in the same place, it means that you'll know where they are, you'll know what the name is of these um, uh, files is in terms of their uh, location. So we're going to click on that, and then we're going to upload file. And then we know these ones are in editor. There we go. Uh, Northwest Airfield, Northwest Airfield, no, nwafplane.json. So we're going to upload that. So we say, OK, so there it is. So, so there it is. Now we're just going to highlight that and just copy that. Now, what we can do, we can go back to our CFG gameplay that we've downloaded. And your, your one will probably look something like this. Let me show you. So it'll be kind of be empty. So what we can do is if we type custom, if we type, uh, in fact, it might not even have this, uh, the um, quotation marks in. So it's quotation mark and then custom forward slash. And then I'm going to paste in northwestairplane.json. Then we're going to put in the other quotation mark, and that's that. Now, if I had some other files that I wanted to refer to as well, I would put a comma in there like that, and then I would put the other file, and the last name wouldn't have a comma after it. So we can now save that. So the two files that we need to upload are going to be cfggameplay.json. Now, we're going to get rid of that five when we upload it, and the map group pause. But before we do that, we're going to go to an XML validator, and we're going to go to a... JSON validator. Again, you'll have these if you watch the video about essential hints and tips. And then what we're going to do, we're going to say, let's choose our file. And we know the one we want to look at is in downloads. And it's CFG gameplay. Sorry, it's map group pause. So we're going to open that. We're going to validate that. And fingers crossed. No errors are found. Excellent. Let's go to a JSON. So it's browse open process valid excellent now when you use something like some of these validators make sure that if they've got auto fix on the fact that if it says oh i fixed this file you know there was an error and then you've got to save that and upload that so we know we're good to, we know we're now good to go so what we can do now is if we go back up to our mission file and scroll down so we're going to be replacing our map group pause aren't we so we can say upload file Map group pause, click on that, upload that. Boop, boop, boop. So that's done there. And now we want to replace our CFG gameplay.json. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to show you a little trick that you can do as well. So with our CFG gameplay.json, we can actually rename this and call it CFG gameplay old.json. And we can save that. And that's like a backup now. So where is it? CFG gameplay old.json. So now we can hit upload. Now because I've got other CFG gameplay.json's in my download file, it's added five onto it. So when we click open and that then uploads to our server, we're just gonna click on that button to rename it. And we're just gonna get rid of the brackets and the five. So it's just like that. And we're gonna just just save that just like that. And what we can do is we can actually if we click on that. We can look at it in the browser. We can scroll down and we can just double check there. Object spawn array, custom, northwest there, WF plane, dot JSON. There we go. Save any changes. It's all been saved. And there we have it. So when the server restarts, it will look at the object spawner array, array in the CFG gameplay dot file and say, ah, take a look at this file. And then it will spawn in these particular items at these roll pitch and yours and, and these coordinates and then it will look at the map group pause and it will spawn in it will say ah oh, right so there's a c130j cargo at these particular at that particular location then it will look in the map group proto file to see what should be inside one of those c130s and start spawning the relevant loot there is a catch though 
Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you'll find that when you create a new build and you put it on your server, no loot will spawn. And you'll be like, why is no loot spawning inside of this stuff? Often, in order to get loot to spawn, the um, edited map group pods must be in place when you do a fresh start. So you've just done a reinstall or a wipe of your server. Um, and that will then trigger it to kind of rework out the loot tables and roots spawn loot in. It's not always the case. Sometimes you'll find that it, loot will eventually start to spawn in. So don't sweat it too much. If you put a build on your server um, and the loot that should spawn in via the central loot economy, the random loot, doesn't doesn't spawn in. Now, obviously, what is going to spawn in straight away is the... Here we go. I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't spot. I didn't. Um, did I delete the? What, what did I? Just go back here for a second. All oh, right. Okay. So I made a little bit of a mistake there because the metal plates didn't get exported as well. Did they? All oh, right. Yeah. Because then what am I talking about? Right. So they're not in the map group pause, are they? Excuse me. Do apologize. The map group pause. The metal plates are in the. Uh, object spawner array, aren't they? There they are. Yeah, of course, of course they don't spawn in loot, do they? Okay, so then we would simply restart our server, and there we go. And that is how we create a slightly more complex build. And I would always say, when you start playing around with the Daisy Editor, start off with these fairly simple builds. Give yourself a chance to make something that will work. If you start by creating these massive cities with a thousand different objects on, you're going to put a lot of strain on your computer to be able to handle all these objects. And there's a real high chance that you'll make a mistake somewhere and you'll be disappointed when you try and get onto the server and you'll be like, well, where is this stuff? I can't, I can't see it. It hasn't worked. So start simple. I would start, if I was a new, new person starting with Daisy Edit, I would start with a simple house or a tent. I like tent. A simple tent somewhere. And um, and do it so that you've got the Mac group pos entry as well, and just see if that works. See if you can get a simple tent spawning on your community server, and after that, then you know start to make things complicated. Um, also, I would highly recommend that you use a local server to test your builds before you go um, up to a remote server, especially if it's live with people on it. Make sure that it kind of works. And remember, in the playlist below this video, there's a link to it, you'll see basic tools and resources. And in these uh, videos, I've got the links to you know, how to make a local server. And because if you've got a computer that can play Daisy Editor, it can probably have a local server running on it as well. It's a fantastic tool. And things like Notepad++ and lots of other different resources as well. Excuse me. And all of the um, uh, sort of the information about how the, all these different uh, files work and how it all sorts of comes together. Okay, so there we go. So that's kind of the end of the real beginner's guide to the Daisy Editor, updated for 2024. I may well add some of the more complex things you can do with Daisy Editor because we've only really just scratched the surface. But there's lots of other tutorials out there and lots of guides out there some of which i've done as well so once you once you've got more questions about daisy editor by all means put them in the um, comment section below this video but also you know do some youtube searches just always be aware of course that some of the videos that i know that i've done are quite old and they may well be la slightly out of date now so things might have changed a little bit but you can really do magical things with Daisy Editor, um, and people have done magical things with Daisy Editor. Because remember, we've just really been placing objects and changing their rotation and their height. But imagine with things like castle walls, when you lay them on their side and turn a wall into a roof. Or maybe you can put down a road surface, or you could put down a river surface, or maybe you can make some kind of... Uh, put rocks down or different trees. But that's all for you to find out. Get the basics down first. Get familiar with it, enjoy that, and then move on afterwards. So I hopefully hopefully this has been useful. If it has it like, if you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And of course, I'll see you again soon.